Okay, I've got a couple of slides about the activities. I've talked about giving the detail of your activities to be able to, to convince the evaluators that you know what you're doing. And uh, we're regularly asked, well, how much detail do I need to write? Yeah. How many words am I supposed to write? And the answer is, I don't know. Um, because it's not a simple question to answer. Uh, whoops. Um, how much detail you write will depend upon you, your previous experience. It will depend on the type of project, whether you are working with experienced partners who have done it before. It will also depend on whether there is a word or a character limit to that particular box. Because nowadays, most proposals are written either online or they have a page limit or a, or a word limit. So. If you have a word limit of, well, a text limit of, let's say, 1,000 characters, then you have to squeeze all of your activities into those 1,000 characters. So there's no point in me saying, oh, give plenty of detail, because it will depend on the circumstances. But you've got to focus on telling the evaluators that you know what to do, you have identified and planned to overcome problems in terms of a risk analysis. And some funding schemes, they specifically ask you to do a risk analysis and present this as a table. So that forces you to think about the likely problems that you will have. So you need to identify and overcome those. And you've got to show that your methods are appropriate to achieve the results that you want. So I've got an example here of gradually increasing the amount of detail depending on the space, depending on your previous experience, depending on the type of project and so on. So let's say this is a, uh, a conference that you're wanting to organize. Small scale proposal, if it was your first one, maybe you need to write more detail to convince them that you know what to do. If this is your 10th proposal, your 10th project, then they could assume that you know what to do. So you don't need to write as much. So I've got an example of text describing a conference dissemination activity. So the minimum information would be something like, we plan two stakeholder conferences to discuss the issues, DOSTA. It would depend on how much space and opportunity you have to add the detail. Here's the next level of detail. We plan a three-day international stakeholder conference in Belgrade in year one, and another three-day event in Milan in year two. More detail, you could say, who's going to be there? We plan to invite key ministry representatives and EU experts. So that tells the evaluators who's going to be there. And you could then say in detail what you plan day by day. We plan to discuss key problems of methods on day one and to present potential solutions implemented in EU states on day two. So there are gradual increases in the level of detail depending on your circumstances. So that's all I want to say about uh, the background of the points that you need to focus on, the challenges and the problems that you need to overcome to implement your philosophy. I'm going to show just one slide here on how you actually present your text once you've typed it. Make sure that, well, let's say it's 10 to 5. We're going to finish in five minutes. Let's say it's 10 to 5 and the evaluator of your proposal has already been reading two other proposals today and yours is the third. The temperature outside is in the upper 20s, the humidity inside is even higher and you've got to keep the evaluator awake and interested and wanting 
to give you a good score. Because the evaluators don't start out by saying everything's rubbish. They start assuming that you know what to do and then they will take points off. So you've got to make sure that you present your, your project, your text, in a form that's going to be pregledna. It's got to look nice. It's got to keep them awake at 10 minutes to 5. So make sure that you have section headings, bullet points, emphasize certain key phrases, underline, put text every so often into a box to, to uh, emphasize it and so on. And then use figures or tables to break up the text every so often. It's, it's everything that you need to do to keep the evaluator awake. Because you've got to make sure that they keep their interest up in what you are wanting to do. So, And there, there's another minor point that is maybe specific to me, but it might be relevant for others. I find information easier to assimilate, to take in or to understand fully when it is written in aerial fonts and not in Times New Roman. So if I see two proposals, one in aerial and one in Times New Roman, I find it always easier for me to understand the information when it's written in aerial. But that might just be something about the way my brain works. Okay, we're getting to the end now. Let me summarize what I've been talking about. So, I've been looking at your, at your philosophy. Your philosophy to make sure that your proposal is competitive. To be competitive, it has to be able to beat the rest. And to beat the rest, yours needs to be the best that the evaluators are going to read. So I've been talking about the way that you need to be thinking when putting together the information for your project proposal. So you make sure that you read and you implement all of the instructions. You have to get rid of any fog. Bez magle. Whenever you see any evidence in your text of something being not clear, any indication that there might possibly be malo maglovito, then you've got to add further detail to define it more precisely. Check all the evaluation criteria. You've got to read those because those are provided for you. And this is how your proposal will be evaluated. So if you haven't bothered to read the, evalu the evaluation criteria, then you may deserve not to get the money because you haven't bothered to find out what you need to do. So you have to check that you have implemented all of the evaluation criteria. If you're doing research, you have to make that the project as a whole is doing world-class research. The EU will not fund second-class research. And only you know that. Well, only you know the quality of your research. Ensure that your significant impact covers all of Europe. Now, if it's a project, let's say for Horizon 2020, collaborating with other groups around Europe, you need to make sure that your other partners in the consortium cover different parts of Europe. Because you cannot afford to have your impact just regionalized to Southeast Europe. Your proposal may then come second if somebody else's proposal covers the other European countries and you don't. And if you come second, you don't get the money. So you've got to make sure your impact covers all of Europe. You've also got to make sure it is good value for money. Because again, if there's another proposal that claims to do the same work to get the same impacts as you're going to get, but it's cheaper, then yours will come second and it won't get the money. So you've got to be very careful at working out the budget. Make sure you keep the evaluators happy by making it clear that you followed the instructions, 
making it clear that you've tried to make it easy for the evaluators to read your text and to take in and understand what it is that you want to do. And if you succeed in doing that, then your proposal will be the best. And when it finally gets to the evaluators, they should be saying the following comments to themselves. They should be saying, this looks a good quality proposal with very competitive ideas from proposers who have followed all of the instructions. This is an excellent project concept, clearly justified and implemented with a convincing amount of detail. It looks as if the proposed project will be managed competently and will have a significant impact. It also looks excellent value for money. Indeed, it looks the best proposal that I have read. So I shall give it a maximum score in every section, and as a result, I shall recommend that they are given the money. So that's how you get the gold medal. All right. Second place doesn't get you the money. In my case, it was third place, and I didn't get the money. I was asking for six million euros, and they didn't want to give it to me. They gave it to... In fact, they gave it to a rival consortium into which I was invited to join. But I said, no, only if I can bring my core colleagues with me. And they said, sorry, there's not enough budget for anybody else, only you. So I said, sorry, I will go my separate way. They actually got the money. I didn't. But that's life. So, that is the end of the part of the course on writing project proposals, and this is now the end of the course. There's no more, and according to that clock, it's two minutes to five. So, it's time to finish. <laughs>